Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's show. I'm really excited to be sitting here with Norbert. Norbert, uh, we met, uh, what was it, a couple of weeks ago in Berlin. And um, Norbert's actually been to Cape Town, lived in Cape Town, knows, knows South Africa well. Um, but you're actually from the Philippines originally, am I right? Yes, yes. Hi, Dylan. Thank you for having me. Yes, you are right. I am from the Philippines, and I've had the privilege to live in South Africa for a few years, and now I am actually in Berlin. I am married to my beautiful German wife, and I've moved here since. That's amazing. So multicultural, and y'all, I love it. Living all over the world and living the dream. So, Norbert, I was just absolutely blown away by your vision, your passion, and what you do so maybe let's just kick off by asking you to introduce yourself to our viewers who don't know who you are maybe like uh, give me a little bit about your of, of an overview of your business and your passion and yeah what it is that you do uh thank you so much again thank you dylan for having me uh my name is norbert elnar i am uh, uh born and raised in the philippines and um again i went to South Africa and then and now I'm living in Germany and um, when people ask me this question it's always like what do I actually do and it helps me process as well to try to really narrow it down so I am a a, a, a brand builder I will call myself that mm -hmm. I actually help purpose driven and values oriented uh, values oriented organizations and businesses craft their uh, professional brands so that they're able to represent themselves very well in in the marketplace and um, no it's I'm, I'm I mean every business has a purpose for sure but I'm really focusing more on um, uh, businesses and brands who are who have that in the forefront of what they do so they're normally churches and nonprofits and other small retail brands who are really uh, led by uh, faith people so um, that's where I'm doing. So I, 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 I am the, uh, the founder and the chief uh, creative officer of Masterpiece Kingdom Brands. We help and teach entrepreneurs how to do professional branding and how to simplify this process for them so that they are able to really communicate well and uh, grow their business to becoming more impactful uh, uh, influential and profitable. I love it. And I have here your your brochure and everything is just beautifully designed. So, but I think you do have to tell people your background, that your agency background, like, am I right? Creative director? Yeah. Like, yes. Yes. Oh, that's, that's awards. That's a fun story because I just see your, I just see your trophies at, at your background and then you just told us about, uh, you know, how you uh, guys have been awarded as an agency and congratulations on that. I honestly can relate and I know it's not an easy w way to get there uh, because uh, back in the days before I moved to Cape Town in 2015, I was part of a multinational uh, advertising agency in the Philippines and we were handling um, big brands uh, that go into the Philippines and also who are already present there. And I was already uh, uh, in the role of a creative director in, in, in the agency that I was uh, handling and I was assigned to. So yeah, my background in, in marketing and advertising and branding is, I, I just realized today it's been quite long. So, and then I moved to South Africa and there I was able to be part of a nonprofit who championed uh, community development in, in certain communities like Mitchell's Plain, Guguletu. And through that experience, um, I was able to realize that it's, it's, actually, uh, it's actually a good uh, a good fit, or not just a good fit, but it is very possible to combine purposeful work with excellent creative communication work. And to me, as a as a, a marketer, as a, a creative professional, I I was so shocked the, the, of the idea that I can actually sell. Like it's actually good to talk about a cause and not just 
promote a cup of coffee or something like that. I mean, that's all fine, but I really found like I fell in love with the idea of like okay, purpose driven um, brands. So that's where I uh, I was able to um, uh, grow my love for this kind of niche in in the in the market space, and mm -hmm. then I was able to develop like a a a framework around that and. That's what is in that brochure. <laughs> I love it. I, and it's so smart because so you've not only not only do you help purpose driven brands to build a brand of brand of purpose, but am I writing? So you've actually built sort of like a, a training almost curriculum. Can people like become accredited in this methodology to give the training because i would love to do the course <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely i i realized that in my time in cape town actually when when you know i was doing all this creative communications for this organization a lot of uh, business owners also come to me and see and talk to me about like hey guys like we saw what you did here and there and then it made me realize that a lot of the um uh values driven people especially who are in church they love to engage in in professional marketing and advertising but they yeah. feel a little awkward you know i for some reason there is that disconnect between both worlds and i don't understand it but i get it and then that's why we were able to uh through this experience i crafted like a a a, a framework that carries really uh a heart of uh, that's that's based on the Bible because yeah. our our main brand strategy we call it like the strategy is scripture, and then uh, and blend it with the best practices of marketing that we've learned through the years. So this by saying this, we've created this brand compass because literally it's a compass. It helps the brands determine mm -hmm. where they need to go so that they don't get like shut down or they don't get lost when their ships is starting to sail in the ocean of craziness in the marketplace. So yeah. that's what it is. So yes, we can, we're really um, promoting our course. A lot of the brands that come to us, um, the leaders take their course. And now we're in the process of uh, also tapping uh, other creative professionals who would want to use our framework so that we can help more people. I love it so much. So, um... So, yeah, I mean, I gave a talk once to a group of uh, of missionaries about how to use social media to um, to basically get do digital evangelism. Mm -hmm. But because the, the talk was part of my sequence called personal branding, because that's what we call it in the marketplace. It's personal yeah. branding, thought leadership. And so I called it personal branding for le for missionaries, but then I got flamed online by the community because there's this disconnect between, you know, you're not there to build a personal brand, you're there to serve. And, and so there's this conflict between like, uh, you know, uh, can you market yourself or must you be all humble and have second rate branding and look and feel and design chaos? Mm -hmm. Or do you go too glitzy like some of, the other, you know, the pendulum that swings the other way. And then some people go a little bit overboard and they kind of lose the mission. So I think that's kind of what you're trying to say is that at the essence and at the heart of a purpose-led organization is this, I don't know, this brand ethos, the, the reason you're doing this, your why, and that has to be your true north, right? So your God-centered purpose yes. in this place has to be the rock that you stand on. Otherwise, you're going to just become like a shallow... Uh, any kind of just like a marketing organization actually just selling CDs and there's yeah. this is all fluff to it. But I suppose that would that would come down to the leadership, just like with a company. Um, you know, it all comes down to the leadership. And I actually said that the brand stems from the CEO. Mm -hmm. Whoever, whatever the CEO is, that is the brand of the company. And usually that perpetuates all the way through. And I suppose you could look at these purpose-led organizations as you know, the, the heart of the leaders and the leadership and however that is, you know, I yeah. don't know what are your thoughts on that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I totally agree on that because I think what the main problem I think as well in, in, in the marketing language is that it is so commonly used. And when, when, uh, when you're a leader, you don't think marketing, <laughs> like, especially brands like ours that we know when we're, 
when you uh, nonprofits, they 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 are there to serve, and that's why I think the 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 framework that we we are are uh, we've created is that it's it's made to serve and not disrupt. I think in, in marketing we are really uh, we're big on disrupting people and yeah, to, yeah. You know, to attract people and stuff. And mm-hmm. and I understand that I understand the reason behind it, but uh, we're challenging the idea of like instead of dis- disrupting people and making them buy something that they don't really need, we are here to serve and we are here to shift the focus to make it more uh, meaningful and more impactful. And I mean, and it it goes both ways, right? Like when you're when you're serving, your customer wins, and you also win. So, in 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 in, in hindsight, it's it becomes a sustainable business. So, um, yeah, that's that's that is tricky. And I think um, what we've done is that we have um, simplified the process of branding and sort of like shifted the the core. The, we, Use the core principles, but add like the, the 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 service aspect to it, so that it is more it is more uh, easy to absorb for your team. Because I've also noticed that uh, when the CEOs engage with us, they uh, they go through the the course, they go through the projects, but then the team that the 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 team, the brand itself, understands it better, and they mm-hmm. find their purpose in their work. And which I think is cool because then everybody's on the same page and everybody is moving the same direction. I think that's so valuable. When we run our marketing strategy workshops, just a second. Excuse me. When we run our marketing strategy workshops, usually with the exco and the senior management, the one of the biggest benefits I found is the alignment of the the team with under one common narrative and pulling everybody together. Because I think. You know, when it comes to companies and brands, they don't often sit down and discuss things like the brand, our big, bold messaging statement, our customers, who are our... Sometimes I'll find that there's conflict at, the, at an exco or a senior management level, understanding who our main customer segments are. So there's this, this big organizational alignment that happens. And it's great if there's, uh, you know, the next level, next level of management are sitting in on it because it serves to sort of align the whole team mm-hmm. on this common like you said the true north the compass wh- who are we what do we stand for where are we going all of that stuff you know so i do think that there's huge value in companies doing that and i find that actually most most companies haven't done it you you, you see these big companies out there and you think that they've got it all in place and they don't have it in place mm-hmm. very few companies actually have it in place and if it's been done it's usually like a couple of years old and it's you know due for a refresh yeah, absolutely. I feel like uh, there's it's a big word, right? Like now in the marketing world, like brand purpose and what is yeah. your why? And and as much as I, I, I mean, that is a, amazing that you know brands are starting to think like that. Mm-hmm. But 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 really, like it it translates differently to each person. So yeah. I think if the leader really takes the lead in as like a like a ship that's sailing, like the captain really takes the lead, and all of the participants in the boat do their role. And no matter yeah. what kind of storm and no matter how far the destination is, you're able to really like like achieve and go to the destination. So you mentioned before we started that you've created a sort of a resource, a downloadable resource. Is that available for anyone just yes. inside? Do you want to talk us through that? Yes. So um because of the uh, because of this sort of uh heart that we have and the process that we go through, a lot of the brands come to us and, and you know, and normally they come and say, oh, can you guys, can, can you guys make our logo? And I mean, of course we can, but that's not going to solve the entire problem. And, and we, and then we talk about how to really uh, craft the brand and how to make, uh, how to make it ready for the future. So uh, we've come up with this uh, brand assessment guide called future proof your brand. So mm-hmm. it's like a, it's like a it's like a brand health checklist that uh, anybody, especially leaders of brands, can take. And we we go through five different areas of brand health that you need to honestly assess mm-hmm. and and check yeah. if it's uh, where, where, wherever your brand is right now, your business, because your current health really affects the future of your business, right? So uh, so we go through this. 
five different areas of your brand health and then you 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 take that assessment and then at the end of the at the end of the assessment there's like a a category on what kind of brand you are and which stage you are in and then we also give you like practical tips on what to do in in order to to really future proof your brand so um it's just like er key areas of assessment like uh brand di digitalization i mean is your brand leveraging technology effectively um your brand online presence i mean that's very clear your brand resilience if it's if your brand is prepared to navigate challenges and is able to adapt in uh, changing market conditions and of course your customer experience if you are if you have um whatever uh, if your brand prioritizes customer satisfactions that build lasting relationships and lastly your brand culture if you can if you're able to attract top talent and keep them and how you know how it affects your long-term goal so yeah. yeah i remember one of my very first employees telling me that your people are your brand we got this landed this big branding pro like project and we were trying to work it out at the same time as we were doing it this was years and years and years ago and um she did all this research and that and the one thing that the big takeaway of it was like your people are your brand i was like well that's true i suppose if you're hiring people who are extremely efficient but not great with customers that's your brand. Your brand is going to be a very efficient brand, you know, like yeah. reputation, but not very friendly, you know. So, uh, so yeah, I think I think it all. You know, I used to. I, I still hate those values posters on the walls that say integrity. And you know, we have our own one as well <laughs> with our own values here. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> but but uh, you know, so on the one hand, it's like, does anyone ever look at these values posters? Does anybody ever? Does it ever? really articulate through but we've gone really far with taking our brand values and um we've been, we're incorporating it in we've incorporated into our um key performance reviews with the staff they get mm. test against it and they get rewarded based on those values so we and we hire based on those values like do the candidates actually meet our values uh and display these characteristics but it is a tricky thing like how do you make sure that a brand lives in a culture like is part of the company ethos and yeah yeah 100 percent. and i mean just like any culture it takes time right to to really uh embed everything in the company and mm. i think as leaders it's it's one of the most challenging tasks to always speak vision mm -hmm. repeatedly in various ways so, Very good. Say that again. Say that again, Norbert. Say it again. I, yeah, I think that as, as leaders, it is, it is, a, it is part of our difficult task to uh, repeat vision again and again in so many different ways. And that's the only. I think it's uh, that's the only thing that we can really, we can really hope for and do. Mm -hmm. you like you try to impart the the culture because mm -hmm. it is the main purpose and mandate of the brand and mm -hmm. people will catch up and obviously we have to be gracious yeah. with some and there's always that yeah. that that margin but yeah. over time once we are showing consistency in communicating the vision people catch up and the customers feel it and that's yeah. i think makes the brand really really strong i love what you said about the leaders communicating it because uh, years ago, I wrote a blog, something about CEO, why you should be using video. And in the blog, I uh, and we can I can get the guys to link it in the description of the of the of the um, the video and the podcast. <laughs> um, but the whole gist of it is that you know, as a leader, we should be doing like Gary V style videos for our leaders, especially when you have a big organization. And sometimes like fine when you know the name of everybody in the company then it's fine but when the company outgrows you and you don't know the name of everybody how are you showing that you live the values and that the best way really is video and you know having a, a slack channel or whatever you use for your company like intranet in the olden days whether it's mm -hmm. a whatsapp group and you share video of yourself living the values and living the brand like here i am doing this and here i am doing that and this is how I live the brand. And today I had a meeting with somebody and it made me think that this and how just reiterating it 
to the entire organization, especially for big corporates where you've got thousands of staff and, and located all around the world, you've got different cultures. You know, I do think that um, video and the, and the tools that we have at our disposal these days are, have created such a platform that CEOs have never ever before had. And I think mm -hmm. most, many CEOs are actually stepping up and into that space. And I've seen some American CEOs that use LinkedIn almost like a dear diary. It's so personal. It's so real. It's so transparent. It's so vulnerable and it's so humble. Their posts, none of this like, I must look clever. I must look great. Yeah. Yeah. It's like here I am and my mom is, uh, here I am by my mom's bedside and she has cancer and I'm meeting with her. It's literal like heart on sleeve stuff. And, um, and I think a, a lot of CEOs still need to make that shift to understanding this is how you must show that, you know, this is actually your responsibility. One of the things that, squarely in your remit absolutely yeah i think more than ever before um authenticity is really the key right i think yes. now more than ever more than ever in history people really follow someone who's real than someone who's always right uh pastor oh, that. Always, oh, uh, that is so good <laughs> That is so good. <laughs> yeah, it's a it, pastor Craig Rochelle. He's he was one of the f most famous, uh, well-known uh, preachers. He always says that uh, people follow somebody who's real, then somebody's always right, and I that's totally true. I think uh, when you're leading a company, no matter how the size is of the of the organization, um, it your authenticity matters to the people mm -hmm. and. And your authenticity actually shows in the brand itself. So I think um, it, it's very clear. And I, I love what you said. Like you people just get real in their, in their, you know, in their presence. And mm -hmm. um, we, as a leader, you set the, you set the standard in the, in the, in the business. Right. And so, and then your staff follow by example. <laughs> so, so if you're really, and, and that's, I think that's just how the brand grows. And I mean, most founders, most pioneers of brands really have that heart. Yeah. And right, like you, you, they never, I don't think anybody founded a business because they want to do taxes or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. they, they're there to make a difference. They're there to serve. And that's, and that's why it is important that the people also catch that heart. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. Look, I do, I have met some, uh, some people where I actually just think that money is at the core of what they do. They just want money, 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 money. But I think um, for those people who have the heartbeat to help, you know, um, creating a brand around that heartbeat is really where what it's all about. The brand essence is really just articulating, um, you know, really what, why are we doing this? Why aren't we, you know, mm. why do we get up every single day? Because I'm passionate about helping my clients grow and expand. And as a business, I'm passionate about creating an amazing workspace for my staff where they learn. And I'm passionate about building a company that um, that is a global company of, of global excellence and global standards. And, um, and those are the things that drive me and that gets me up in the morning and makes me mm. you know, do what I do. Um, and yeah, I think that's what it's about is as a leader, it starts with the leadership, but it doesn't end with the leadership. It's, mm -hmm. it's every single staff member's responsibility to live the brand, but it is our responsibility to have a clear brand that they can live. Yeah, absolutely. hundred percent. Um, yeah, I, I, I get, I totally get that. I think what, what, what we forget sometimes is that we're, we're in a, we're in an environment, uh, that, that has influence in a massive scale mm -hmm. and as brands we have that re it's our it's our responsibility um uh, more than just a business so i think for me that's really that that keeps me up at night you know like what yeah. how what, how am i taking care of that responsibility making sure that i'm i'm imp i'm uplifting others so yeah i mean imagine if all brands think like that like imagine if all brands actually just think that they can just be a blessing to the world and serve people yeah of course they will get money but if if imagine if that's the heart of every brand how different would our world be i know that is so true if if each person just helped one person and if if the, every brand was just motivated 
fine make money as a byproduct but you know the star the, the staff that work for you you've always got to have a couple of people that you're building up and developing you know and there's got to be you know I always say to people that I meet, I don't mind driving a Range Rover, but if I'm going to, because that's my dream car, Range Rover. <laughs> <laughs> when I get that Range Rover, you know that I've got like five full-time orphans that I'm supporting and, you know, this orphanage or, you know, something like that, because I always feel that, I mean, I want to, I, I don't mind being wealthy, excessively wealthy. That is my dream to be excessively wealthy, but it's definitely going to must uplift some people along the way, but that's just yeah. my motivator. I don't think everybody is motivated like that, but I think, um, but I think it does give a brand a sort of a 360 degree glow when you do have people at the heart of what you do. Yeah. Um, I must also say though, that like with, um, Brands like uh, you know, purpose-driven brands. There's there's so many of them are really like churches and nonprofits, as what you mentioned. And a lot of these guys uh, discount themselves from the access that you know professional marketing and branding offers. And most I, I've met some I've met some of the brands that they're really just mm. they're they're scared to 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 go there because it it, mm. it 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 they feel like it's not uh their territory but I, I would disagree though because there is a reason why marketing works and why are we not using these tools to really champion the good cause and and that's why i think it's a, it's it's a it's a shift of mind as well like we're not tricking people to you know to do something we're actually empowering people to be a blessing to other people and that's why i think when you're Done it when you do it with excellence, with the right tools, and with a with a with a you know sound mind, it changes the game. I I completely agree. I think for me, it's almost like saying that music, uh, music, music doesn't belong to, for example, churches, and that that you know why why shouldn't churches have the best music out there and be the best at what they do? And so it's the same with branding, social media, digital tools. You know, yeah. Uh, but yeah, as long as it's used for good and not for evil, then I think that's fine. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Amazing, no, but it's been so good speaking to you. In closing, is there anything else that you wanted to leave with us? What about your book? Show us your book. Yes. <laughs> well, aside from being uh, a brand builder, I am also I also wrote a children's book, and basically, it uh, it's it's called "I Have a Masterpiece." It's available on Amazon. And again, in the in the branding business, it's all about identity and purpose. And in my, in, you know, and during the pandemic, we said like, okay, we we have to solidify this identity and purpose in a child as early on, because every child needs to know that they are not a mistake, that they are a masterpiece of the, of God. So that's wow. why the book is there. It's also in German, so it's also available in... I was just thinking, is it in German? Because I've got some kitty's birthdays coming up. Please send me the link. I am yes. fine. Um, so you can go to masterpiecebooks.com. Um, it's, everything is there for the children's book. And also, if you do want to take the brand assessment uh, guide that I was mentioning earlier, earlier future-proof your brand, um, please you can go to masterpiecebrands.com slash future proof your brand and then you can uh take our assessment there and yeah that's and grow your purpose-driven brand amazing and i will also include all your social media channels and websites and everything in the um, description below so people can reach out to you and follow you if they are interested in speaking to you. I have seen some of the work that you've done and I absolutely love, for example, the iHub logo that you did for Hillsong, if I may mention that. Mm. It is stunning, 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 absolutely gorgeous design. Very cleverly done. Um, I also host a, a podcast entitled uh, Making a Masterpiece. And there we talk about how to build your faith and inspire your business. So yeah, come check it out on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. 
Amazing. Check out the links below, guys. And thank you so much for joining me, Norbert. You've been amazing. And to our audience, thank you so much. Remember, you are a masterpiece created with purpose. And um, yeah, please do reach out to Robert, uh, Norbert if you're looking for a stellar brand strategy for your purpose-driven business. And reach out to me if you're looking for digital marketing for your B2B business, take you global. Nice chatting to you, but have an amazing day, everybody. Bye. Bye.